I'm going to mention it again that about a third of all the closings that I see come to me. And these are real closings. The investor put in the time, effort, and money to get a deal. And for whatever reason, the seller, the end buyer, doesn't come to closing. What can you do about it when the end buyer doesn't come to closing? Uh, well, you can keep his deposit. Well, that's all you can do is keep his deposit. You can't do more, can you? Well, the problem in many cases is the end buyer never sent the deposit in. So, oh my gosh, uh, he breached the contract to begin with. I can sue him, as I said a thousand times, the only winner is the attorneys. So let's back up and talk about, okay, what can you do? And it may not make sure that he comes to closing, but it may help you recover money. Your earnest money deposit, despite what you think about non-refundable being in your contract and all that, the closing agent is going to require a release of that amount to be able to pay you from the end buyer. Why should the end buyer pay you the money when he he's not going to get anything for it? So he'll say, sue me. The closing agent will say, I'm not going to get sued, so it's going to stay in my trust account until you guys work it out. However, what I do is I add to the contract do me a personal favor. Give me a like down below and share and most importantly subscribe because I have a lot of great information that will help you get more deals and help you make more money on the deals that you get. An additional contingent amount if in fact the end buyer doesn't come to closing. Now, as I've said before in some of the other videos, it's not a giant amount. It's like $3,000, but it depends on the price of the contract. Now, interestingly enough, I happened to be looking at a closing package and I saw the lender package and I noticed in the lender package they had a fee. It was called a breakup fee. It's like somebody texts his girlfriend and says, I'm breaking up with you. It was a breakup fee. Basically said, if we don't close for any reason, not having to do with us not funding it, you owe us the breakup fee. And the breakup fee was three points. It was like $6,000. And what I call mine is just a contingent fee for not coming to closing. So if you have to sue him, you can sue him based on the fact that you get the earnest money deposit and you get the breakup fee, I'm going to call it, for lack of a better word. But you don't have to do it just on the back end. You can do it with your seller. Because if your seller goes away, what are you going to get back? presumably, your earnest money deposit. But in the minds of the seller, what if they won't sign the release? Now, if you're thinking, I never heard of this before, you haven't done enough deals. It's a pretty common practice. And if you don't believe me for some reason, next time you're ready to do a deal, say to the closing agent, what happens if the seller or the end buyer doesn't come to closing? Are you just going to give me the end buyer's money and do I automatically get back my earnest money deposit with a seller and see what they say. They're going to say to you, we can't take the risk of being sued by you, the seller or the end buyer. So we just keep it in our escrow account. So I'm going to call it the breakup fee <laughs> for both the end buyer and the seller. I thought that was really funny when I saw it. I'm Dave Dinkle. And I wish you limitless success in all that you do.